Nature Change has published several stories about removing dams and culverts to return rivers and streams to natural flow conditions. But Michigan still has about 2,600 significant dams scattered across the state. And according to the American Society of Civil Engineers, about two-thirds of these dams are older than their 50-year design life. The vast majority of Michigan's regulated dams impound water for recreational purposes, like regulating water levels in lakes and providing flooded areas for fish and wildlife. Dan Devon works for the Dam Safety Unit of Michigan's Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, or EGLE. We met up with him near the Lake Leelanau Dam in Leland. Most often, like I said, it's recreational. Uh, being able to have boats, as you can see across the way here, uh, navigate in and out of you know, marinas and things like that uh, around these impoundments. While the construction of any dam requires permits, Eagle only has regulatory authority over the 2,600 larger dams, including those that hold back at least six feet of water with impoundments of at least five acres and dams that are used to control court-ordered lake levels. And so there are legal requirements uh, for these dam owners to inspect their dams periodically based on what the level of hazard is. So, you know, a high hazard dam needs to be inspected every three years, whereas a, a low hazard dam would be every five years. Uh, and then those inspection reports need to come back to us uh, so that we're able to determine whether or not any corrective actions need to be made. The most common corrective actions required concern the removal of vegetation like trees that can weaken dam structures. Standing at the Leland Dam just above Fishtown, Devon offers a little more detail. So we have three, three uh, hazard levels uh, that we deal with, uh, low, significant, and high hazard dams, uh, Leland being high hazard, and that's really determined primarily based on risk to life. So a high hazard potential dam basically, if it were to fail, has the potential for loss of life. Um, other factors that we look at and consider are environmental impacts due to a failure, as well as socioeconomic impacts. Uh, but really that, that risk to life is the number one key feature. And the reason, as you saw earlier, looking downstream, we have a lot of tourist activity, a lot of buildings that are right here on the river front and not very high above river level. And so if, if the dam were to breach and you had a, a flood wave come through, you know, there would be a high, high risk in that scenario. Near Glen Arbor in Leelanau County, the Crystal River Dam is used to control water levels in the Glen Lakes. This one is considered a low-risk dam, partly because the height is less than six feet. A great question that comes up is, does this hazard potential ever change? And um, it, it can, certainly. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with you know, our, our interactions with the river. Uh, and so there's two, two main mechanisms that can happen. One is, obviously, if we have development downstream of a dam, you know, if we're building within the floodplain, that's going to change that risk. Changes upstream in the watershed can have huge impacts. You know, we've seen this on all of our rivers as we've developed in urbanized areas. The runoff that comes in increases the magnitude of our flood events. Well, that then increases your flood stage, which could increase that risk to life, environment, everything downstream. Another way the hazard level of a dam can change relates to the increasing frequency and severity of storms in northern Michigan. Record rainstorms can cause flood flows greater than the dam was designed to control. So if you have a flood that comes through your dam that is greater than what you were previously designing to, we now need to consider that you are going to experience larger floods. And so we have to change the way we're managing that dam. We may need to increase spillway capacity or provide more armoring to stormproof, you know, against experienced storms. For example, we have uh, recent flood events like July 19 of this year, uh, 2019, uh, where we experienced in Lake and Mason counties 12 inches of rain in a 24-hour period, uh, unprecedented amount of rain and stream levels of flooding on uh, several of the rivers within those counties. And with that, there will be the reevaluation of, you know, did we experience something greater than what we were previously anticipating for the dams that are within those counties? And do we need to change the way we're, we're managing those facilities? Similarly, uh, for the Leland Dam, you know, we've seen extremely high lake levels. Uh, and so we were experiencing situations downstream where 
the water levels were coming up to the dam. And when you're looking at impacts on the downstream side of the dam, much like on the upstream side, you know, we need to ask, are, are there risks there? You know, are we gonna have erosion? Are we gonna have issues with maintenance and operation? And how do we address that? And, you know, that's something that comes up, like I said, both through the inspections and then with those issues arising, you know, the owners are working with their engineers and with uh, the regulatory staff to make sure that we're addressing it appropriately.